so you have some salespeople and you identify that they have some of those. You know, they're decent. You know, what's holding them back is they have two or three of those other traits that you mentioned, like yeah. be like self limiting beliefs. How do you work? Is there a process to work through those? And what does that look like? There are. Some people will just not be good salespeople. You got 90 some odd percent of people out there selling right now really shouldn't be, right? They do it because they've always done it forever, or it's good money and they make it work, or they bounce around from job to job. Um, but some people are just so low with, on their sales quotient, they're never going to be a good salesperson. Uh, but each one of those things can be addressed, right? The DNA can be addressed. Uh, Non-supported buy cycle, you just got to learn to be more decisive, right? We've done that training with people where we've had great salespeople, non-supported buy cycle. Uh, we had one case where I live, um, and the guy was about to buy a couch with his wife. And we, we, we made him become decisive so he would force his customers to be decisive. And, and we played a game with him. We said, here's the deal. You can go to every furniture store you want to and look at as many couches as you want to. But once you leave that store, you can never go back. You either buy or you go to the next store. And you can do exercises like that to make someone more decisive. If someone's a poor closer, let's say because they've got a need to be liked, then you can start to insert rules in your sales process. Um, you know, uh, we've dealt with that before where it's somebody who, uh, they, have, they, they can't close. And the reason they can't close is because they're a relationship builder. They're a relationship builder because they have a need to be liked. So what we'll do is we'll just say, listen, do everything the exact same, but here's the rule. You are no longer allowed to bring maybes or think it back, back it overs to the office. It's a yes or it's a no. And I'm not gonna even tell you to, to try to make it a yes. But you're going to have to tell your prospect at the end of that call if it's anything other than a yes. I don't care what it sounds like. That that's a no, and you know we can't just leave contracts hanging out all over the city all day, right? Yes or no, and no is perfectly fine. Not going to hurt my feelings. And when you implement rules like that, that's going to teach them, right? They're going to get more yeses because they make people be decisive without pressuring them. And then over time, when they see that over and over again, and they see some of the deal killers kind of creep out afterwards, then they're going to learn. Wow. Uh, I can, they can be more decisive when there's deals sitting here that I'm not taking advantage of because I've been afraid in the past. So then there's rules you can put in place. So all that stuff is trainable. So when we're working with sales teams, we'll look at that stuff, we assess each person, and then we put together personalized coaching plans for each person based on those assessments.